Hi, Scott Bowers here. It is uh, Tuesday. I'm uh, almost at the office. I wanted to check in with you three weeks from today. I'll be leaving and I just wanted to check in, give you an update. I got my bike fully loaded, so I'll be training in full over the next three weeks. But I want to say two things. First, thank you to all the people who have shown such generosity in supporting this uh, big adventure of mine, Scott's Youth Resiliency Adventure across the United States. And secondly, I want to remind everybody to get those questions in that you'd like to ask America. I've seen some really creative questions. I just want to make sure everybody gets a chance to weigh in uh, before we pick the final one. So stay tuned and we'll uh, talk later. Thanks. Bye. I'm Scott Bowers. I'm the executive director of Focus Ministries, which operates the Lord's Gym Ministries in the greater Cincinnati tri-state area, as well as the Youth Resiliency Adventure fundraising event. Some people ask me uh, if I have a, uh, another interest in uh, why I do what I do. And, you know, that could stem back from a um, uh, the challenge that addiction uh, had in my, my family. And I think, you know, addiction is that 800-pound gorilla in the room that uh, uh, affects one out of four families. And it's almost become woven into our culture and uh, accepted, which is really unfortunate. Um, in my situation growing up, uh, you know, my father, uh, he, he struggled with um, alcoholism. Uh, and to his credit, uh, he found uh, courage to confront it. And uh, after numerous attempts, um, he found his sobriety. And we, we are grateful to God that he was able to do that. And having lived through that as a child and a teen and a young adult and, and experiencing that firsthand, um, I think it's given me the uh, uh, experience, the empathy, the uh, understanding of, the, of how it impacts families. I could go into, I, I mean, I saw how it affected my, uh, my mom, my, my two sisters, and even as an older adult, seeing how it has um, uh, affected other families. And so in serving here at the um, Lord's Gym Ministries, we, we see so many of our friends caught up in addiction. And I see how it affects them. I, I can appreciate how it affects their families. I can see the youth whom come into a uh, our ministry through our youth ministry, seeing what challenges they have when we learn about um, uh, their, their parents' situation, and honestly, even uh, some youth who have uh, gotten caught up in uh, various addictions. And so um, prevention is the key. It's the strategy that can help uh, make an impact, can make a difference. Uh, the National Institute of uh, addiction, uh, NIDA, I believe it's called, uh, says that for every dollar spent on awareness and prevention, uh, there's a seven-fold uh, return just in uh, reduced uh, health costs, incarcerations, um, and other types of uh, reactions that uh, you're avoiding because the person isn't have to having their addiction problem uh, dealt with. And I can see the, the, the wisdom in that. So, uh, my own personal experience has uh, given me, I think, a deeper heart and understanding for the, uh, the adults and the youth uh, whom we're serving. So it's a, um, it is, it's got, I've, I do have a background that uh, I think makes me more empathetic to that. Shane, riding a bike across the country is not just something that uh, came to me one day. It, matter of fact, it wasn't even on my radar until I had the opportunity to ride a bike 525 miles with a collaborating ministry that we work with, City Gospel Mission, in 2016. And then I got to do that particular ride a couple more times along with riding across Ohio uh, through the Ohio to area uh, uh, bicycle trail. And I did that by myself. And it was getting those types of 
activities under my belt that I wanted to do something bigger. And I learned about the Transamerica bicycle route, which is Route 76, that connects the two oldest cities on the east and the west coast. And all I can say is that uh, the idea germinated like a seed and it grew. That was in 2000 and um, I want to say 17, around 2017. I ordered the map and actually framed it and signed off that I wanted to do this in the next five years, really before the end of uh, my 65th birthday. And then as the years rolled past, um, it dawned on me that I'm going to be having my 20th anniversary in 2021 and I'll be 64. And that just seemed like a good time to uh, celebrate my 20th anniversary and attempt something like this. And so uh, I, in 2019, I, I can, as we sit here talking, I can remember asking my board of directors, our trustees at Focus, uh, to be off for three months in 2021. And while they were in disbelief and amazement, they, they agreed and that gave me the green light then to start moving forward with my planning. You know, when you plan to do something like this and prepare, especially after having done the trip and met so many different people who've done it, uh, I have seen it to, hey, I'm just going to go out and do this, to no preparation at all. And then you got me, uh, your type ones on the Enneagram scale, who uh, is pretty anal when it comes to uh, planning and preparing. And so, uh, you know, I, I could spend a lot of time on this, but as succinctly as possible, um, when I decided to do it, I formed an advisory team of seven to eight people, two people who've done it before, uh, uh, an endurance athlete, um, people from our board, my staff, and, and what have you, and stealing their ideas and bouncing different things off of them. Uh, I finally got to the point where one year out, um, I locked it in and then began acquiring all of the slowly the the supplies the equipment and um, probably the biggest thing creating an itinerary uh, how I would pull this off over the course of three months my role was having the conversations with Scott about whether or not he was actually gonna go in 2021 or not and then as he kind of got to the decision that yes not only is he going to do this, but he's going to do it by himself. Uh, it was a lot of conversations. I think I got added on to the team because of my crazy passion for fitness and outdoors uh, kind of activities and everything from meal planning to thinking about water stops to logistics and contingency planning. So it was a lot of fun, just even in the months of preparation and discussion. Uh, for fitness, health, sleeping, accommodations, and things of that nature. Well, when Scott was telling me about his trip, I was so excited and a little jealous, but, <laughs> but everything he went through, I don't think I could have done it at all. So um, I prayed for him a lot. And every time I would go out riding when he was on his trip, I would pray for him. So I was mindful of him like, oh, Scott's riding. And he had his updates that I would see on Facebook. And um, prior to that, we did some training rides. So that was fun. Um, and he told me, <laughs> He wanted to, um, I think he, his goal was to eat ice cream every day. I forget. <laughs> so we had ice cream on one of our training rides, and I gave him some ice cream money for his trip. <laughs> Scott talked to me about this trip five years ago. Maybe it was ten years ago. So this wasn't something he came up with in the last year or two. And I know he talked to uh, the board uh, at Focus years ago about taking time to make this trip. In, in classic Scott form, it was just well planned, thought through, and it's actually been thought through for several years. So our, my role, and actually my wife's role as well, uh, we assisted with some of the uh, material things that he needed. He actually had a website. We could go out there and see what was needed for the trip, so we helped a little bit there. Uh, we talked about it quite a bit. For example, he said he wanted to come up with a question uh, to um, ask people in, in every location that he went to. So we discussed what that question should be. 
And uh, so it was, uh, from our perspective, just being a part of what he was thinking in, about this trip and maybe just being a, a sounding board as he uh, considered uh, what he might ask on this journey. You know, the, the goal at first was simply, I, I want to ride across the country. But um, when I break that down, there were a couple components uh, that would go into that goal. Uh, I think there were three. Uh, really, I, I needed a break. I had been, I've been in inner city ministry for uh, going into 20 years in 2021. And I just needed to step out of that um, environment for a while and uh, recharge as it were. And doing that type of activity sounded like a, a good idea. Uh, the second one was just to really have some intimate time with the Lord to hear what he might want or expect of me uh, when I got back. And then thirdly, uh, even though I was stepping away from the ministry, I still wanted to do something on behalf of the ministry. Uh, while the first two items would be beneficial to the ministry, the, the third one was to execute a fundraiser. And that would be to draw attention to our event called the Youth Resiliency Adventure, which is yradventure.com, which brings attention and um, uh, resources to the work that we do as it relates to helping youth stay off of drugs. When I first told my staff and the board, I had this, this map, this is of the actual Transamerica Bicycle Trail. And when you see a line across the country and you see uh, a line going from uh, Yorktown, Virginia to Astoria, Oregon, uh, through Pueblo, Colorado, north to uh, and bouncing off of Missoula, Montana, it's uh, eye-catching. And so, frankly, people thought I was nuts. Did I lose my mind? Am I sure I wanted to do this? How was I going to do it? Um, my family, uh, everyone except my wife, uh, were very concerned, but my wife, uh, who, who's known me, uh, was not surprised in the least. <laughs> Mr. Bowers is one of the most uh, giving, loving, contemplating, uh, and supportive people I know. He is a huge cheerleader. He is a, a statistician and strategic powerhouse um, with a heart for people and a ministry that is amazing. He biked along with about 10 or 12 adults, about 10 kids from City Gospel and from Focus and I saw his incredible uh, willingness but dedication to the sport because he had fractured his hip about six weeks before this event, shattered it just like a windshield would shatter into little pieces. And I don't think there was anyone other than Scott that thought he would ever make that trip. He's dedicated to biking. Did I have any doubts from the planning stage to when I started? Um, you know, maybe I would say, when I originally signed up to do this, I was going to do it through an organization called Adventure Cycling, using one of their um, uh, guided tours, as, as it were. But when COVID hit, they canceled that trip. And so at that point, I wasn't going anywhere. And this would have been in the April, May timeframe of 2020. And so I thought, okay, I, I'm not making this trip, at least with adventure cycling. I looked at other options that were fairly expensive. And so I thought more about it. And I thought, why not just go by myself and carry all my own gear? It would be called a self-supported ride. And the more I thought about it, it made sense. And I discussed it with my wife. And so at that point, the, uh, we were back on. But the doubt was still there a little bit. Um, I met with a few people who actually did the trip and I began to call some of the places where I might stay en route and to see how they were handling the whole COVID crisis and how they might be anticipating the 2021 
year. And so after making enough phone calls to the different cities and towns I'd be rolling through, uh, I concluded that it was a, a good risk. And so at that point, I then moved forward uh, with the um, uh, intention of going. So at that point, uh, the doubt started uh, fading. Uh, one last thing on that, six weeks before I was planning to leave, I injured my lower back uh, in an activity, uh, repairing a dishwasher of all things. And honestly, I thought that that could delay the trip due to the pain I was in. But um, with some physical therapy and some topical cream, we got that under control and I was still able to make my departure date. When I told you that I got the, uh, an advisory team together, one of the things uh, we discussed at length was what bike to, to get. And interestingly, uh, in answering this question, in 2020, when COVID hit, uh, that year, uh, bicycles went flying off the shelf in most bicycle shops. So the, the supply was very low. And getting something in, and in time for my departure, uh, even in May of 2021, was a tall order. So part of it, I had to go with what was in stock. And um, what I ended up settling on after a, a trial basis and a long conversation with um, uh, Jim at Jim's Bicycle Shop, uh, we landed on a gravel bike. In this case, it happened to be a titanium bike, which is, you know, strong as steel, but uh, much lighter than steel. And um, it's called a Linsky uh, 260 gravel bike. And we made probably 10 modifications to the bike, again, based on the people that I was talking to on my advisory team. And uh, it, it really suited my purpose as well. I had really about five months to, to train through the winter on it in preparation prior to my departure date. What prayer was to my spiritual side of sustaining me, the, the nutrition was what got me kept, kept me going physically. Uh, again, going back to that advisory team, and I think by now you can see that the advisory team was really helpful in my pre preparation to do this trip. Um, one of the gentlemen uh, who was on my team who did it in 2018, the exact trip uh, where he was carrying all of his own gear, he had hired a nutritionist, which I did reluctantly. Frankly, I thought I knew all there was to know about nutrition and this type of activity. Well, the nutritionist took me through three, uh, cat three categories. Uh, sodium, hydration, and appropriate caloric intake for the amount of calories I was gonna be burning. I was fairly knowledgeable on the caloric intake and the hydration intake, but I was way off on the sodium. And without going into a lot of specificity, um, through some very uh, calculated assessments that uh, she did, and her name's Heather Fink out of um, uh, Indiana, uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, she took me through a very methodical approach and was able to recommend the appropriate quantity, hourly quantity of sodium I would need to keep my system balanced. And I was surprised at how much sodium I was going to need and that the Gatorade intake and that type of thing was just going to be insufficient. And you know, I attribute meeting with um, Heather and the information she provided, I characterize that as a game changer. I was, uh, I, I did not really have any physical problems other than some saddle sores uh, during this whole 71 days of riding. Granted at the beginning, uh, physiologically writing the Appalachians. They were tough. Uh, they were physically demanding. But as far as my body reacting to all of that, muscle cramps, soreness, and what have you, uh, I really believe working with Heather as a nutritionist and following her instructions pretty much to the letter uh, sustained me and um, really elevated my uh, performance for a 64-year-old guy. So I am very uh, delighted to um, to say as I sit here that um, from a nutritional standpoint um, I I was very very well covered there
after my first day of writing, I learned that um, this was going to be a big, bigger deal than I thought. Um, I rode, I rode to my intended destination, and already uh, the place I had intended to stay was not available. And so I had to resort to a plan B, which did work out. And in the ensuing days that followed, uh, which was uh, March 4th, 5th, and 6th, um, there was a cold front, an Arctic cold front that came down uh, and blanketed the, the northeastern part of the United States to include my part of the country. And the weather slowed me down. And from the first day through that first week, each day I got a little bit further behind. And so my itinerary and my mindset and the importance that I felt of needing to stay on that itinerary was out the door. And I mean, I'm thinking, am I gonna have to call my board of directors and ask for an extra week or two to complete this? And this is just in the first few days. And my mind started playing uh, havoc with me as to what could be in store. And so um, all the planning and resources that I had lined up, uh, I found myself canceling appointments and while I was writing, then having to look for other places to stay. And again, that played with my mental and emotional state that uh, made the trip right from the very beginning uh, that much more challenging. Well, when you're gonna do something big like that, you really need to plan and um, tap into the resources that are available because he did that, I know, and he would tell me along the way, like, so-and-so's helping me with this, and the bike shop's helping me with that, and um, Bob Kissinger was a big resource for him because he has done stuff like that. So Scott didn't go into it like, oh, this will be a breeze, you know? <laughs> he did all of his research, and that's the thing. You really have to plan and prep and have some backup plans, I would imagine, because I think that might have been the one thing that caught him off guard a little bit, like the unexpected, the weather, you know, things you can't control. So having a backup plan. People that I met along the way, uh, I would say most of them were, were memorable. That would include my, the people whom I rode with uh, beginning in the second week uh, to concluding um, uh, when I rode through Astoria. But the people who I met to step into my life to want to provide help. I'll tell you this, the folks that I encountered were so kind, so generous, so hospitable. I could tell you about Lynn on the um, uh, Blue Ridge Parkway who stepped in to help me when I had run out of water. I could tell you about uh, Ryan and Monique in Idaho who stepped in when my brake pads finally gave out and I was in a pickle uh, to get the, the bike repaired. I could tell you about um, people back here in Cincinnati who were helping me um, along the way. Now, now those I, I knew, but um, I could tell you about uh, some of the pastors who I met in, in the different churches that allowed us uh, to stay there. Uh, two people who I barely even knew allowed me to stay in their homes with nobody in them. Uh, they were just giving me the keys uh, to stay in their homes after a, about a 20-minute uh, interview. Um, the uh, Ronnie, a, a Vietnam vet, when I rolled into the first town in Kansas, who at age 16 um, was drafted and participated in the Tet Offensive and was sharing on Memorial Day what his experiences were like. Um, the, the people were gold and I will cherish those memories and those uh, acquaintances uh, for the rest of my life. You know, my faith was probably uh, one of the, the big takeaways on this that, um, you know, I, 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 care, I consider myself a pretty strong uh, Christian. And uh, so going into this, I, I, I was expecting uh, nothing short of just a very intimate time with the Lord, but the Lord through the different experiences I had, 
uh, many challenging experiences, use those to draw me closer to Him. I mentioned earlier that, uh, for example, when my itinerary after day one pretty much was nothing more than a reference document, um, I, Shane, every morning I, I prayed the Lord's Prayer, something that, that's so basic. Uh, we're, here we are uh, riding across the country, I say we because of the different people I met, all carrying our gear, and, and we're living out of uh, a bag that carries our food, three months worth of clothes, which isn't much, uh, and living in this very simplistic nomadic lifestyle, it, it takes a lot of work and uh, grit, actually. And when I didn't know where I was going to be staying, and I'm praying, Lord, you know, I, I need your intervention here. Uh, by the end of the day, I, I would know where I'm staying. And uh, I, I would think, wow, that was such an intimate and simple uh, daily prayer. And to see those needs met like that uh, just <clears throat> uh, drew me in that much closer. Uh, the first three weeks were the hardest. Uh, and, and I knew they were going to be just because of having to develop a road rhythm and getting used to uh, riding. Now, the, the Appalachians were probably the hardest of all the mountain ranges. But Shane, in week three, um, I had a, a very unique incident occur. And um, what I have here in my hands is my crank from the bike behind me. And we had, I had one of the most uh, unique, uh, catastrophic bike failures that they're just not, these things just don't happen. But um, this is the upper ring, this is the lower ring of the bike that the chain revolves around, <coughs> revolves around on. And on my lower uh, ring here, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, the ring collapsed, a bolt came out, and uh, the structural integrity of the ring uh, was weakened and the ring folded over on itself as I was pedaling and jammed into the uh, uh, part of the bike frame. And so I came to a complete stop and um, through prayer and God's uh, direction, uh, the, 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 the answers to the prayer uh, would come each day uh, to get this thing corrected and um, uh, where I could resume the could resume my writing, but it was situations like this and uh, just other opportunities along the way that God was intervening, and and as a result of that, my my faith was just being energized in a more I would say intimate way, and um, ensuring my confidence for uh, the remainder uh, of the trip. Through God, this is God's calling with Scott, a deep desire in his heart intertwined. And the biggest piece of that was for him to be, as I said, once he started this journey, so close to the Lord that when God exhaled, it touched Scott's face, his heart. He spent three months every day completely pinned on the Lord to say how far he was gonna go, how, how his strength was gonna sustain him, how was he gonna manage the challenges of each day when he was starting and when he was stopping. That's an amazing um, experience and perspective that I think if most of us had, can we truly say in our life that we've had three dedicated months where God is with you in every waking moment and guiding every single decision, physical, mental, spiritual, and emotion in your life. How important was prayer? Uh, it was critical. Frankly, if, if I walked you through all 71 days of riding, 83 days on the trail, um, I, I would say that the prayer of the saints back in Cincinnati and frankly, uh, across the country, uh, sustained me. I, I just could not envision doing this, especially with some of the uh, obstacles that I was incurring along the way that uh, uh, I, I'm just confident that the Lord was watching out for me. He had my back the whole way 
And uh, there were so many God moments that um, I, I knew that it was a result of so many people uh, back home praying for me. Oh, uh, you pray for safety, you pray for him to meet people along the way and to um, just, you know, get the needs that he has met, especially when he's so limited on his resources, you know, you just pray that, like for me, I'd have to have my coffee every morning. I don't know if he had it every morning, but it would be hard to not have it. And you can only carry so much on your bike, you know, so yeah, just for God to meet his needs, and he did. Our, our relationship with God, hopefully, is changing on a regular basis. It's it's like being married, right? Uh, you uh, The way you n met your wife and knew her uh, early in your relationship to where you are now, it, it grows that that uh, intimacy, that trust, the uh, getting to know each other. And even after you've been married 10, 15, 20, 30 years, that relationship is still growing and uh, strengthening. And this was one of those experiences where uh, the, the demands of the trail, uh, where you're, you're really seeing how that how strong that relationship is. And you're seeing God respond to your prayers and to your circumstances in ways that you know they could only be explained by Him. And, and maybe you hadn't seen that level of responsiveness before. And in seeing that, it just uh, pulls you into the the presence of God in a more dynamic, real way that um, uh, as I sit here even thinking about it, I brought that back with me to the ministry. And I'm, I'm hopefully, you know, a stronger and uh, more uh, devout believer as a result of, that ex of those experiences God led me through and responded to in such a uh, very specific, uh, detailed, and, and intimate way. Did I ever want to give up along the way? Is um, It's a great question, and when I think about it, uh, if, I, if I'm being honest, uh, I would say there were fleeting thoughts. I, I would say they, I, I was taking them seriously, but uh, in those first three weeks, dealing with uh, freezing temperatures, uh, one case a hypothermic situation that I was able to recognize and, and get out of, but again, uh, losing uh, time on my itinerary, getting further behind, uh, having the epic bike failure that I did in, in week three, um, those, those setbacks uh, they play on your mind. When I looked down, I was uh, in the Berea, Kentucky area when that uh, lower ring failure occurred. And when I got to the bike shop, I had to basically ride 16 miles extra that day out of my way uh, to get to the bike shop, telling me that they could not fix it, that I would have to ride, if I wanted to continue 300 more miles to uh, Carbondale, Illinois, and during that time frame, hopefully find and locate the part that I needed. And again, with COVID, a lot of bike parts were not, we called the manufacturer and that bike part, the manufacturer didn't have the bike part. And so I'm seeing these obstacles and Cincinnati is just a couple hours away from me. And I'm thinking, I've got good reason to point to that, hey, I could just stop right now and people would probably understand. I was thinking like that way, but I didn't want to stop. I, I'm thinking, well, I, well, I could, I don't want to. I want to see this through. And plus, I had, I had gone on record with so many people uh, publicizing that I was going to do this, raised money and that type of thing. Um, so the, the, flo the, the thoughts were fleeting. Um, I never took them seriously, but in, uh, in all honesty, they, they did uh, appear on my uh, internal radar 
but um, I didn't give them much thought. The, the goal was to work through the, the challenges. And, and you know, on that, um, when you attempt something like this, uh, at this magnitude and, and um, what have you, one of the things that came to my mind uh, as far as trials that we experience, I think there's two things that God might be doing with those trials. One, he's obviously trying to make us more Christ-like to see how we're going to respond to that trial. But you know, in this particular endeavor, there were a lot of people watching me on Facebook and uh, I'm, I'm telling people what's going on. And I'm thinking, well, now there are people watching me on how I'm responding to this. And so you don't know what they're thinking or how they are reacting to my circumstances. But um, I, I, I wanted to make sure that as I respond to this and, and other things, that as people are observing me, that um, they're uh, seeing a very uh, positive reaction and uh, one that could be a blessing to them. My sleeping arrangements on the trip were... Um, uh, were varied. Again, going back to that uh, ad advisory team, it was very helpful hearing from people who camped along the way and, and that type of thing. And so um, my sleeping arrangements basically in one of the saddlebags on the back of my bike, uh, one bike, one pannier was devoted completely, and we call it your sleep system. And the sleep system consists of your tent, your sleeping bag, your mattress, whether that's an air mattress or a, a foam rubber mattress, uh, your drop cloth, um, pillow, and, and what have you. And uh, I need, I'll tell you that I, I nailed the sleep system. I was so grateful. I slept so well uh, in my tent. Uh, never, never had a problem uh, with it. And when it was cold out, and here's how the, you know, the Lord intervened. Um, there were other options along the course, especially uh, in the Appalachians and in the Ozarks uh, more so, where there were hostels to stay at. Uh, in the Appalachians, there were bike, I mean, there were hiker hostels, and uh, there were churches that had created a ministry for bikers. And the, the amazing thing about m most of these churches, and, and I say we probably slept in about a dozen of them, whereby there were just instructions on the front door, uh, welcome you to come in. The door of the church was unlocked. They told you where to put your bike. Uh, they told you where the food was. They told you uh, what areas you could sleep in and uh, just not to make a mess, clean up. And um, they, they asked for a, a consideration of a donation, but I could walk all throughout the church. I could walk into the sanctuary. I had complete um, roaming uh, of the church. And I was just amazed that these rural churches would invite complete strangers in. And um, in that second week when that weather uh, hit, every night I was able to find uh, a hostel uh, to stay in. So again, that's the Lord there, I think, looking out for me. And, um, and then the other thing I'll tell you concerning my sleep system, uh, and again from the advisory team, I decided that each week I would take one day off. And so in doing that and, and budgeting for it, I had planned to stay in a hotel. And so the, the town that I would stay in, that night I would roll in, I would stay in the hotel, take the next day off so I could stay the night there uh, before resuming uh, the ride. And so the, there were three things then. There was uh, the camping, which was the, the majority of the time. There was the occasional hostel, youth uh, uh, church hostel, and then the, the weekly uh, spending the night in a hotel. In anticipation of the end, uh, the excitement was building really with each week. Uh, coming down through Idaho, uh, coming down through Hell's Canyon, I spent three days in Hell's Canyon. Uh, going across, excuse me, going through the cross, across the state of Oregon and hitting Eugene. Uh, when I hit the city of Eugene, uh, 
as a sidebar note, at that point, uh, over the course of those 11 weeks, I had caught up to my itinerary. I was really only one day behind. And I ended up uh, catching up. And so my last week, which was going to be a short week, uh, Betsy, my wife, flew out and met me so that when we rode up the route, or when I bicycled up Route 101, uh, that you could just see the days, day three, day two, day one. And seeing the first sign to Astoria at, at like 61 miles away, then 55 miles away, it became surreal. I'm thinking, I can't believe I've been on the road for three months. I'm looking at the Pacific Ocean. Uh, then next thing I know, I'm battling the headwinds as I cross the bridge onto the peninsula of where Astoria is located. And I'm riding uh, around the peninsula and intersect the bike trail headed towards the uh, Maritime Museum where it ends. Uh, I'm, I'm getting speechless. I am in awe of the, the moment. And then coming around the corner, I see Betsy and we had some friends who were, who had met us there. And one of the friends was actually riding with me. He fell back or, or slowed down so I could, um, uh, have that moment. And, you know, I'm, as I'm riding up there, the, the emotions began to well inside where you're fighting back tears. You're like, oh my gosh, this is going to end here in just a few moments, in just a few minutes, in just a few seconds. And I'm seeing people cheering. I'm seeing people I don't even know cheering. And when that tire, that front tire hit the curb of the Maritime Museum with the... Um, Columbia River right next to it in a U.S. Coast Guard cutter. Uh, as soon as I felt that bump, it's like it's over. I looked down at the speedometer, uh, the odometer, my cat eye, and it says 4,427.1 miles. And, you know, I am like, I knew it was going to be over 4,000, but 4,400. And I was speechless. I did not know what to say. Uh, again, I'm fighting back uh, tears as I'm trying to talk to my wife and those around me. I'm thinking, what just happened? And then, uh, you know, I got off the bike and people were surrounding me, giving me the high fives and shaking my hand and what have you. Um, it was just a very... Uh, surreal moment and then a tiny bit of a letdown because I'm thinking oh my gosh it's over and then I'm thinking all right it's over I can rest <laughs> uh, so you kind of got these two uh, emotions going on at the same time uh, because I have to admit it, that at that point uh, I was tired and um, I was looking for uh, it to be done uh, to not have to do or have that rigorous of a uh, daily grind to uh, ride that far and, uh, you know, sleep outside in a, in a tent. So um, both joy and sadness uh, kind of going at, this, at the same time and then not knowing what to say to people. Kind of a, a weird moment. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Scott Bowers here at Lord's Gym Ministries. I want you to see what's behind me. It's the Pacific Ocean as in big body of water my bike my front tire is in it i am here in oregon after three months of riding when we began on may 3rd with my back tire in yorktown in the yorktown river or the york river and leaving there at 7 30 in the morning and three months later after riding solo and with so many awesome people who I met along the way and riding with them. Um, I just want to say uh, to so many people who made this trip possible, who've prayed, who've invested, who've encouraged, who've followed, uh, it's because of all of you and your support that each day I was able to continue riding the 
60 plus miles that it took uh, to get here over the last three months. So without uh, a whole lot more, I just want to say again, thank you. We're here um, celebrating. My odometer is just north of 4,400 miles and I will be talking more about this. I've got lots of photographs to process and uh, would love to meet with you personally, share with your group, however you'd like to meet, where we can talk about this. And I would just say to you, challenge you, that if you've got an aspiration, a goal, or desire, go for it. Figure out a way, make the plans, and go out and do it. And so I'll be talking to you more about this, but uh, again, thank you so much for making this trip possible. I'll talk to you again. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye. He's always had a heart for people and a passion, but there's a deep impact that you can feel in Scott, having seen parts of the U.S. that he's never seen before, experiencing the loving kindness of strangers to stop uh, and give him aid and assistance and a place to rest and dwell uh, when he was in need. And that then flows through and pours out through him now as he's returned in new and amazing ways. God is listening. Scott said that many times. God is listening. He is watching. That he cares about the details of our lives. To get from one end of the country to the other, basically by yourself on a bike carrying your supplies, God has to have his hand on your shoulder. And he did. He learned a lot. A lot. And he made some really close friends out there. And um, I think he definitely let God just be in control, you know, like I think when he started out, he thought it was going to go a certain way, and it didn't, but he met a lot of great people that came alongside of him along the way, which um, I know he's blessed by those relationships now, so, you know, just like moving forward now, I know he's still passionate about helping the kids do this, and he wants to grow his knowledge even more in his training and doing this, so he can now um, bring others along on the journey because that journey does show you that you can, you know, do something that's hard and you can have fun doing it and you can realize that you can accomplish things that maybe depending on where you're coming from, your background or, you know, your upbringing or anything, you know, you can feel defeated or not worthy or whatever, but accomplishing something like he did or even, you know, riding 50 miles in one day is huge and you know from something small but it's still big you know to riding across the country it's like it has an impact on you like it really does um, empower you to know that you can do more so I think he wants to share that um, that potential that is out there for people and to see that they have it inside of them I do feel like I achieved my goals you know at the beginning I said I just needed time to be away from the ministry. And uh, even though I was uh, sending information uh, through post to um, my team back in Cincinnati, uh, I really did not think a whole lot about what was going on back in Cincinnati and in the tri-state area. And, and honestly, I could do that because Focus Ministries, the Lord's Gym Ministries, has just an outstanding board and an outstanding chairwoman in, in Yolanda Carter. And um, secondly, we have a phenomenal, gifted, passionate uh, team of uh, people who are crazy about the Lord and are so passionate about the ministry. It didn't skip a beat, really. So I was, uh, I got to do that. And then through all the different experience and some of that we talked to you about, uh, I felt like I definitely drew closer to the Lord and that my relationship with Him just was that much more intimate. And I've, I've come back uh, a stronger uh, believer. And honestly, uh, Shane, I've come back uh, even more empowered to um, serve in this capacity as long as the board uh, will have me. Um, even at age 64, uh, I don't plan to retire anytime soon. And uh, matter of fact, I... I 
I, I pray and I hope that I don't have to retire. I, I'll just find something else to continue to do to serve the Lord. And then thirdly, I told you that I was trying to raise funds for the Youth Resiliency Adventure. And uh, at least so far as, as we sit here speaking and we still continue to raise funds for, for what we're doing, um, we've raised over, or the Lord has raised through this endeavor, over $23,000. And funds still come in, and people who are interested can go to www.yradventure.com uh, and give or and participate in the events we're doing, as well as they can go to our website, Lord's Gym Ministries, all one word, dot org, and click on the donate button and uh, uh, contribute that way. So I've been very pleased with both uh, the awareness level of what I wanted to do through the uh, Youth Resiliency Adventure as well as raise funds.